How are you doing Africans? I hope you're doing fine where you are. Probably by now you might have heard about the theory of the Atlantis. Atlantis was a very technological city with advanced technology that has never been seen in the world. It is believed that the creators of those Egyptian pyramids were not humans and it's also believed that the people who created these pyramids were aliens and these aliens some of them are the ones who built this Atlantis uh, city. This Atlantis city is a real city that exists up to date. Okay, scientists have made discoveries about this Atlantis city. We've seen movies coming out, going, coming, going about this Atlantis city, a city that is full of technology, advanced level of uh, communication, uh, computers, and all that. But there's something that they clearly don't tell you. They don't tell you that this Atlantis city had sunk. It's underwater. It's under the Atlantic Ocean. No wonder Atlantic Atlantis. Something I have to tell you is this. In the ancient, ancient, ancient times, we had just one landmass. We didn't have continents. We just had one landmass called Pangea. Pangea was surrounded by water that was called, okay, this, it's a hard geographical term, but called Panthalassa. Now, there came a very great flood. Uh, this great flood is documented in the holy book. Uh, in the book of Genesis, we find a special character uh, called Noah. If you want to discover the problem of racism, I like talking about racism so much in this channel. Racism, colorism, all that. We have to discover how this thing came out to be. Why do we have racism in the first place? Racism is an human invention to achieve certain level of uh, authority above other humans. You understand? I think he's a pastor, not professor, who is going to show us, dedicate to us the information from Noah's Ark and from the Atlantis is where we had the first instance of people called um, Africans, black people. Let me use the word black people because black people found themselves in a continent called Africa. He has a special theory that he's going to explain to us and I want us to watch this and then I shall give you my thoughts by the end of the video uh, where we shall also have a deep critical analysis. How did true world history become mythology and get religiousized the whole world over? We are talking about Atlantis, the antediluvian world. Here is the last known image of the antediluvian world. There was a worldwide civilization destroyed by a flood. That's what antediluvian means. This world was destroyed by a deluge and only eight people survived. Noah and his wife, Shem and his wife, Japheth and his wife, Ham and his wife. Now it's hard enough for his sons to take Noah's word for it while he's building a boat in a world where it has never rained before because there's a flood coming and it's gonna be caused by rain, huh? But you would think that after they got off the boat, they'd hang on his every word. Is that what happened? Uh -uh. See, God was only talking to Noah, told Noah to build the boat. All the rest of these people got the story secondhand from Noah, from God, even if they witnessed it themselves, so that they all get to form their own opinions on what happened, and only Noah knows for sure except they trust what he says. So were the people on the ark happy that that world got destroyed by water? Not necessarily. That might not be a lot of people right there, but it is a lot of opinions on one boat. Furthermore, this world was full of corrupt flesh and tainted DNA. Look, God let the clean and the unclean animals get on that boat right there. You think he let any of the unclean people get on that boat? He did. Ham's wife must have been dirty. With what? Tainted DNA, bro. From what? That's another story told about the antediluvian world that I already told you 20 times now. That woman right there had tainted blood because her ancestors weren't all human beings, bro. And I don't mean they were animals, I mean something higher than that. Descended from the gods? Yeah, literally. Let's establish this fact right now, that Ham's wife was descended from the gods of the antediluvian world. Who were they? I'll tell you again, they were angels that quit their celestial bodies. What do I mean? Stars that quit being stars to come down on Earth. Like that Black Mirror episode where they have that device in their head and they can just go into the VR world by doing this. And when stars break the laws of God to come down play Nintendo, they got stuck here, bro. They couldn't make it back up to their celestial bodies. And that's why we have planets in our solar system. The planets are the soulless celestial bodies of angels who quit heaven to come down and play Earth and got stuck here. When God flooded the earth, he bound those angels in chains and threw them into hell. 
Those are the gods of the antediluvian world, angels who quit their first estate to come down and be gods on earth, to mate with women and have offspring. Ham's wife was descended from those offspring. How do I know? Giants in the land before the flood and also afterward. Where'd they come from? They were all born from this woman. Knowing that the tainted blood made it through the flood and that they were all born from these two, let me explain why we can be sure that they were not happy that that world got destroyed. Let's start with the descendants of Shem. Now all these names are important for world history, but what we're really concerned with is Abraham and who was born from him and the religions that came from that. Abraham received the religion of Shem from Melchizedek when he came out of Babylon into the land of Canaan. He passed that down to his descendants and they didn't all stick to it perfectly. They might deviate on this side or on this side or might not be able to get over this part. And so they do the version they can do and that's why there's differences between the religions, partially. Shem and his descendants got blessed to rule the world forever. Here's Japheth's boys and their descendants, once again all important to world history, but here's a name that we know especially, Magog. Another important name here is Ashkenaz, as in Ashkenazi. Google that word. Japheth got blessed to dwell in the tents of Shem forever. Here are Ham's descendants, once again, all important. Canaan got cursed due to Ham's sins to be the servants of Shem. Before anyone freaks out, like the Hittites were white, bro. The Philistines were descended from Mizraim and arrived in the land of Canaan on boats from the Mediterranean. But for the sake of mythology and world history and religion, we're really concerned with Cush. You see, Cush and his descendants got right busy building cities and nations and empires again. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen all with one person, but Cush lived a real long time compared to his descendants. Was viewed by them as a god. Was viewed by them as descended from the gods because technically he was. Cush was married to Semiramis. Semiramis was pregnant with Nimrod. They didn't want to lose Cush's godhood status. How can they explain his death and still keep the political power? Well, not a problem. They just say, hey, don't worry. He's going to be reborn. He's already in the belly of Semiramis. And so they told the tale that Nimrod was the reincarnation of Cush. Was it true? No. But this is Isis and Osiris. Nimrod set up the first empire in the post-flood world with his wife, mother, empress, god Semiramis. And this is where the idea that the emperor is god incarnate comes from. Where Pharaoh being God or Caesar being God, these ideas of the emperor being God comes from Cush, Nimrod, and Semiramis deifying themselves to oppress people. Get it? Now there was some truth to their tale. Because they were descended from Ham and Ham's wife, they were technically descended from the gods of the old world. But they didn't stick with Noah. They didn't follow Noah's story. They didn't stick with Shem. Shem followed Noah's story. They didn't stick with Japheth. He tried to follow Shem as close as possible. They brought on the ark with them the religion from the old world. But those gods that quit heaven to come down to the earth aren't there anymore. Where are they? They're bound in chains. We have to make statues. Who's going to speak for them? Well, if you ask Nimrod and Semiramis, they can speak for the old gods. They are the old gods reincarnated, according to their story. The gods of the old world live on through humans now, namely the emperor and the empress and their children. This is how mythology formed up, fam. Ham and his wife told their offspring a different tale than the one Noah told them. Nimrod took that story that Noah told, went the Gnostic way with it, Here's the hidden details. If we employ this information correctly, we can be God on the earth. Ye are gods, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. How far? All the way into hell. King Emperor God of the world is reserved for one person and his name is Jesus Christ. Everybody else is pretending. So the story that Ham told Cush was not the story that Noah told Ham. His version of the flood was far different from his perspective and his wife's perspective. They were sad that the gods weren't here anymore and that the civilization wasn't here anymore and the technology wasn't here anymore. They didn't want to live in God's creation. They wanted to live in a creation made with their own hands. And the only way to make great creations with your own hands upon this earth is on the backs of the oppressed. You want nations and empires and technology and civilization? It's built on the back of a slave class. It's built on the back of a slave economy. I don't care what you call it in 2024, I call it debt slavery. And it's an efficient method, well employed. Mythology and religion in any place 
is only the story that Noah told, told by the perspective of his sons, handed down to their descendants the way that they told it. Human kings keep getting added to the pantheon of the gods because they're deified as the reincarnation or the representation or the vicar or the flesh of the gods on the earth. The Chinese kings were known for burning all of the history that came before them and starting over with themselves being the emperor god of the story, you see. Everyone adding their own self-interest to the mythology and the religion and the history, making themselves the ones that are supposed to rule the world. From the Tower of Babylon, perhaps before then, Japheth's descendants spread out into the far-flung places of the world first, the Isles. Japheth's descendants are the indigenous peoples of the world. Why do the aboriginals of Australia circumcise as part of their religious belief? Because Japheth followed Shem, who followed Noah the best that he could, traveling and spreading out and descendants being born and doing what they do with the stories and such. Like Noah doesn't have any control whatsoever over what his descendants do with the tale he told them. And the more descendants there are, the more they're going to do with the tale to serve their own self-interest in the story. Whereas these men followed Noah's story in a direct line of succession that came to Abraham who God spoke to once more and Abraham followed God. And he has no control over what his descendants do with the story that he tells them. Even the Israelites did not stick with it. Kept going into captivity over and over and over again because they strayed away from it. But whom God loves, he chastises. Israel can never be lost in the end. God has promised him much. And you might ask me, who is Israel? And I will tell you, he is not Ashkenaz. The Epic of Gilgamesh is literally about Nimrod going to get the story of the flood from Noah. Atrahasis is the same story reimagined. Whereas the Bible tells a full logical tale in great detail. Names literally every one and tells the whole story from the beginning of time to the end of time. And it is unique and distinct from every other tale on the subject. And it happens to tell a tale that everything that exists agrees with, shows the pure reasoning and logic of everything in our reality, and survives while the rest are fragments. True story. Wow. <laughs> this is such a powerful uh, revelation. It's a powerful revelation because some of the problems we are experiencing today um, in the world is because some people have placed themselves to be called the chosen one and they really aren't the chosen one. You will be surprised who is the chosen one and who is not. For instance, uh, the brother has said there is a story that Noah was telling and the more the generations were coming out, the more versions of the story were coming out. So it was very hard to tell the true version of the story from the false one. And Noah had three sons. He had Shem, he had Japheth, and he had Ham. Shem was the most blessed, and Noah blessed Japheth and told him, from Shem shall you eat. But he cursed Ham. He cursed Ham because at a point in time, uh, the father got drunk, and he watched this, uh, the nakedness of the father. And what he did was love. Something that even I myself will not, have, will not be happy about it. You know, your child seeing your nakedness and then laughing. Ah, 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 so bad, so bad. It might be accidental that they saw you naked. But laughing is not accidental. That, that made Noah very angry and he cast his son. Now his sons came out and they started uh, spilling lies and telling lies and telling lies after lies after lies. Now we have these people called the Jews. The Jews have, they, has, they were scattered all over the world. Uh, we have the Ashkenazi, as the gentleman explained. We also have black Jews, as history is always telling us. And then we have the Jews who are living uh, in Israel, modern day Israel right now. But who really knows the origin of colorism? Who really knows uh, who was cast? Who really knows? Uh, we know who was cast was um, Ham. I'm telling you, this, this story is so complex because colorism and racism, I believe, were bathed during the times of Noah. It's when it was bathed. It was bathed back then. But listening to the brother giving his verdict and sharing the information about uh, the old times and today and how those old tech uh, came out to be 
uh, Atlantis, something I've always loved to know. And um, I hope you find value in what he has said. I really don't have much to say in this video because my knowledge is extremely limited on this. Um, all I can say is that um, whatever he has said uh, is is in alignment uh, with what's written in the holy books. Yeah. So, uh, if you enjoy my video, kindly give me a subscription. I will surely appreciate. Support me on Patreon. It is through your support I'm able to get all this. Without you, we don't have all this. Most importantly, without you and without the, the heart that God put in you uh, to support us, to watch our videos, to share. Uh, you can also support us on Patreon. Uh, give whatever you have uh, to help expand uh, EFK, original documentaries. I'm planning for more and more is to come. Yes. So I hope you find value and see you in the next one. Remember, just love to... Um, just love God. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say that. Love God. He's, he has a lot of plan for you and me. See you in the next one.